<clears throat> okay yesterday stuff most of you should remember because we had done it too often fire triangle fire quadrilateral all the parts of it then how the fire starts what precautions you take to avoid how the ships are built and then we went through the last part was basically uh, we saw the properties of water and uh, carbon dioxide and the foam came and that time you all were already tired as you all were claiming so let's start from foam now foam is something that we all have seen from childhood uh you will remember the small bubbles and all small children we do it and all the small children keep on running around with bubbles so that is also foam so what it actually does we need to stop fire now one method is cut off oxygen cut off fuel from meeting oxygen so another method is you can use something like a blanket now obviously blanket is a solid thing and how will you cover it up who is going to go across and pull it so it's more difficult so what we do we create a blanket that is blanket is made up out of foam now foam is a combination of small air bubbles and there is a soapy type of liquid which has got surface tension which you have done in physics and that is how each bubble holds on its own and when they join together they form a foam now same thing happens when you are washing your hands and all you create foam froth is foam the major thing when we deal with fire and the type of foam we need to select is the major stuff is it has to be stable it must form quickly it must be stable because there is no point if you try to use a foam on something and each bubble starts separating itself they must adhere to each other so that is a major property now okay there is a lot of research done on this and we are users so we do not get very very deep in it but we should understand there has to be a certain stability factor it has to hold on and certain properties must be there now what it does is <clears throat> the foam is put on top of liquids it is light in weight because it is mostly air so it will always float when it floats on top it seals the fuel surface from oxygen okay when you start putting foam in the beginning foam will be fighting to take the control and you will find some incidents it opens up somewhere then again it covers up and so on wind is there it is also going to have some impact now the foams are what we use are water based you can have foams from variety of things but what we use are water based foams and that is why we have a issue with foam this water based foam has got this problem with live electrical equipment and also since it is a chemical which is going to get mixed with water the chemical has got its own stability issues they will be like uh, uh, shelf life there are two things always the one is shelf life that is how long you can keep it without using it and other one pot life means once you mix it up how long will it last so there are two things okay like you know the milk carton what you buy you know tetra packs if it is in sealed condition in a normal temperature it will last probably 6 months 1 year but moment you open it then it is going to last only maybe 3 4 days no not more than that so same thing applies here now we generally have three types of foams in use on board one is 
slow expansion up to 20 times the quantity of water used means once you mix it up the foam solution one liter will produce 20 times 20 times foam normally it is used in engine room if at all used nowadays it's not used much but if it is used in engine room it just goes and covers up all the uh, uh, high risk uh, equipment there is a base and there is a tray so it covers up there so that if any fuel leaks anything it will not come in contact so it is like a preemptive thing it just goes and covers up everywhere medium expansion foam anything between 20 to 200 times and it is more like you know snow you, you see on road some of you live in north so you are aware of the snow so something like that it is and it is basically used more on a tankers on deck that is medium expansion high expansion foam is entirely different ball game high expansion foam is practically uh, what i will say its uh, uh, method is different first thing it is produced by mixing with air other two foams what we do is we mix up water and chemical and the foam is formed high expansion foam you mix with air and it is got a generator that is a net like thing where there is a fan and it pushes out foam and it's very very fast and it is normally used uh, nowadays on uh, roro ships because you can quickly cover up everything but high expansion foam most important thing it is used it's not on open decks like medium expansion foam is used on open deck on tankers but high expansion foam it is in closed spaces you just fill up the whole place with the high expansion foam and to do that you have to release the air in the enclosed compartment so this type of foam when we use we need a escape route for the air so that air is replaced by this foam now engine rooms also have tried out this high expansion foam but basically idea is to remove the air and then whatever happens the foam will keep on uh, you know some foam obviously get will get wasted with the heat and all and provide little bit air which is trapped there but it's just matter of time next foam concentrates normally this is what you see on the screen is low expansion ones because they are portable ones they are like about 20 25 liter drums you just put one end inside another one is connected to portable gun and it sucks it and the foam is made which is applied on the burning oil then you have got two types of foam in broad category okay the one is a protein foam other one is synthetic means it's organic type uh, that's protein one and earlier days it used to be uh, animal blood animal blood was used just mix it with water and you have got frothy thing now the protein forms you will not see much of it now but they do exist now here we have got some of the problems mentioned. Decompose animal, vegetable for stabilizing additives and added something to make it better, not in a natural way. Now these inhibitors, protein like antifreeze, corrosion of equipment, bacterial decomposition, because this is going to be a issue, and control viscosity because after all it has to get sucked in that venturi tube if it's too thick it will not move and then you will not get foam advantages disadvantages this you have to know thoroughly low cost good burn back resistance good water retention good stability higher heat resistance fine 
but disadvantages can degrade through freezing and thawing because always remember you may be fighting fire when the temperature around you may be minus 10 degrees celsius it's possible and it is relatively slow in spreading on liquid surfaces it's got too much of binding then we comes to then we are coming to this part fluoroprotein forms they are again combination you add something take out something and make it better it is better than that and it is little less than affx faster flow over means you know it covers the fuel surface faster increase burn back resistance more expensive obviously you are adding up so many things it has to become more expensive and it has got shorter shelf life than synthetic foams now what happens is synthetic foams when you are making it you can work out with uh, you can work out with the quality of it like you want shelf life like this this is like designer product so and moment you have got protein once there is shelf life because it can't go unlimited now the advantages also include better sealing qualities good water retention not affected by freezing thawing can be protected with anti freeze non toxic biodegradable nowadays you have to worry about this last part non toxic biodegradable because toxicity uh, can affect people on board then we come to film forming now fluoroprotein foam these are different types but uh variations then comes the mainly the what we use these days synthetic foams flow is much better it needs lesser concentrate expensive expected anyway reduces burn back resistance and it has got some tendency to mix with the fuel because what happens is when we talk about hydrocarbons and fluorocarbons yes you are deriving it from there at the same time what is on fire happens to be a hydrocarbon in most of the cases so there will be some tendency to mix with the fuel why because both of them are got hydrocarbons now this is what you have to know thoroughly aqueous film forming foam affff now excluding air oxygen is fine but this is what is the more suppression fuel vapors because when the fuel is open and there is a temperature fuel is hot it the fuel vapors will be formed now they will try to break the coating of the foam so this is where this additional property comes in handy vapor sealing capacity as we say good vapor sealing capacity rapid spread rapid flame knockdown good viscosity because it is designed see these foams are designed then take this advantage it's okay because you have to read all of it i'm not going to just read it from the book for a purpose of reading there are some disadvantages but by and large they are still more effective than the older versions of the foam see most of the times fires what we see will be uh, class a fires we can use foam on class a fire also now this alcohol resistant one it is used on uh, specific types of cargoes because these cargoes like 
alcohols and ketones can be cargoes on your ship in that case you have to ensure like yesterday i mentioned before loading the cargo chief officer takes into account whether we have got suitable fire fighting uh, capability now one minute huh? i am just going to hold it and see some people are raising hands so what is the problem okay one is burn back resistance it is like you know uh, burn back is how do i explain it's like when you putting something there on fire it will start burning also in initial stages and it that is like there will be resistance to burning but yet the burning power may be stronger till the property of the foam overcomes that uh, resistance which is coming from the flame that is like burn back resistance okay we are okay go on now this is where i was talking about the specific cargoes the specific cargoes you need to make sure that you have got proper system you can't say after loading that i don't have fire fighting system now we have got uh, different types of foam systems but we are looking here uh, is like we first will refer to handle extinguishers like uh, small b class fires for that we have got extinguishers otherwise you have got a fixed foam uh fixed foam systems like here low expansion then you have got chemical high expansion then you have got roro ships then you have got in some places total flooding of machinery space caldex and also on. then we come to dry powder it is just a powder and its purpose is no okay you can't have toxic one but its purpose is when you uh, use it it interferes with the reaction and it stops that chain reaction and that's why fire burns out there is no cooling effect and again what happens is since it is like a dust thrown around there is also danger of reflash reflash is possible reignition so when you use the dry powder extinguishers where as you must have seen you use it and you wait till it is burnt out because in the beginning it may look as if it is gone and there may be reignition so that is where you have to be a bit careful <clears throat> is basically used more for electrical equipment because uh, you can't use anything else on that co2 you can use but when you use co2 you can't be standing there in closed room closed compartment with when you are using co2 because then you may go down now again we have got few types okay different types bc type and abc type bc type is for liquid and gaseous fire sodium bicarbonate you know what is sodium bicarbonate that is what is used in cakes and biscuits potassium carbonate more expensive then there are other ones as you have got here abc is normally more common today because what happens is uh, earlier days we used to get this issue if you use the wrong extinguisher your fire may spread instead of extinguishing so we had this particular problem of identifying the right one and then using it now uh, the world is going for only one type of extinguisher which should apply on all types of fire 
they are already in market though not on ships yet but it's just matter of time you will see them on ships now here basically when we look at it the uh, fires will be abc class so the abc powder was made and as the same thing there is no cooling effect it's only interfering with the chemical reaction so there is always a chances of reignition now this is little tricky the metal fire metal fires are actually a specialized thing because like what we are mentioning here magnesium potassium sodium and all we don't carry them that day. this is the only thing we have it on board as a cargo swap that is like metal filing and they can catch fire because uh, generally when you do that process to make swap you use oil it is like you know using uh, something not let machine drilling machines and all whatever scrap is there that is this cargo and it is liable to catch fire and it is a bit dangerous fire if at all one gets a scrap metal and the fire starts there we take our chances always by either using water because you will never have such a massive amount of dry powder small parcel is different but when cargo goes on fire it's a you need a big amount so certain types of cargoes you are required to carry additional fire fighting equipment some types of cargoes now this is that dry powder stuff okay now we come to this is wet chemical ones just if you know there are extinguishers wet chemical ones so just keep it in mind that there is something like this because it is not exactly covered in our syllabus helons are banned helons are banned for quite some time so generally you should never see one helon substitutes possible but it is more like a co2 type so it's not really and it's much more expensive so you don't really see it anywhere and see this part and you are unlikely to see this phasing out ship everybody has replaced it long ago helon substitutes they are more effective than co2 you need lesser volumes but the cost is always very high normally they use these helons not so much for ships but more on aircrafts and all not on ships rarely inert gas that we will be doing inert gas is what exhaust gas okay those are exhaust gases cleaned up and all and that, that means there is a very little oxygen content and you can use it like on tankers you always keep it in so those are the inert gases and where will you get it when there is a fire that is another problem so they are generally used uh, localized things but not as a common thing you have got like carbon dioxide has been used in extinguishers and uh, we have already done it the water mesh these are the systems now these are the system is basically all the system convert water into fine water droplets now there are variety of systems in this what we use on ship is one sprinkler that is like your shower little stronger than shower and another one is hyper mist where you make it like fog and that you put it in the engine room basically it's a closed compartment system both of them sprinkler can be outside also because now uh, like some container ships got fire on deck so they all have been thinking how what sort of arrangement so right now they have created 
that you should be able to spray water on whole block of containers that is the only way your container temperature can be brought down but remember the water mist system ashore also there are very modern systems because uh, somebody had come to give a demo for uh, warehousing uh, a truck very little water is required it comes in pulses you can even use an electrical thing it's like but those are more modern systems not on used on ships yet because they have taken care of this electrical problem also this some sort of pulp system okay you don't need to know the table because here it is just talking about cost this that only thing if you can remember this part now we come to causes of fire obviously fire don't generally start like that okay there is a possibility like uh, spontaneous combustion or something like that but normally fires don't start they generally start because of carelessness irresponsible behavior or not taking proper precautions that is another very common thing common cause of uh, shipboard fire means that is where it starts in accommodation is smoking earlier days it used to happen i don't think it will happen so much now but guy used to be drunk means you know we all had our great reputation of uh, drinking smoking etc 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 so guy had couple of drinks he is too high he is smoking and he falls asleep while smoking so his bed catches fire and once he start he doesn't even know there is fire and he's sleeping in the fire and then obviously the cabin will have couple of things which will catch fire bedding catches clothes paper anything is lying around so this used to be one of the then over a period there were some movies wall put movies and all to show that was bad thing and also on okay there is something that individual hot work no hot work is always done with permit but it is possible somebody takes advantage doesn't even clear the area because idea of permit is make sure that there are no loose ends around to catch fire that is there but hot work can catch fire because you are already dealing with the uh, high temperatures and if guy is careless he can start fire it is like this somebody has got a burning torch in hand and he decides to chat with somebody and his hand is moving somewhere else without realizing he will start the fire galley activities uh fuel lines are not there in galley once upon a time we had this system we used to use fuel oil and we had like stoves and all it doesn't exist anymore but what can catch fire is like this grease fat like uh, hot oil can catch fire means if you have tried your hand in cooking you will realize this thing happen like a deep fryer if it is very hot oil especially very hot and it can just catch fire because you give it a spark from somewhere machinery spaces generally anything goes because there your oils are heated up for burning and under pressure if pipe lagging or something is open and there is also possibility of some short circuit happening somewhere but there is more fuel available that is what we look here machinery spaces there is lot of fuel is available that is where a fire can start electrical faults most of the time on a good ship you should not see anything because 
uh, everything is uh, properly controlled but this is one possibility somewhere on older ships see everything is gas type practically and suppose some places something is bad and you have a, a person who is not good with job and he doesn't replace the gasket or something then this is problem this is generally uh, charging of batteries you produce hydrogen if you have got lead acid ones which we may not have any more on ships but uh, in that case that hydrogen is available to burn fuel oil system bunker operation is same thing because fuel is available you allow it to leak moment it leaks it comes in contact with oxygen and only thing it needs is heat and you have got a fire this part chemical reaction spill in ship stores see we uh, follow segregation segregation is a separating stuff like you don't keep acids and alkalis together you put them in two separate lockers you have got enough uh, space on the ship you don't have to mix up things that is laziness you have got systems available you keep them separate like for example we don't keep oxygen and acetylene cylinders together keep them separate same reason segregation so by mistake also you don't allow things to come together this is where that risk comes in dry dock because dry docks is a place where you go for repairs or refitting and that time lots of people will be working lot of stuff is everything is in sort of chaotic situation that is where things can go wrong tankers there is uh, always a issue because in case something leaks and there is is one of the most important one is this electrical conductivity that is static electricity you need a continuation uh, like in you know, a continuity to make sure there is no charge developed on the ship and uh, which can cause spark so this is the most important you will always find uh, when you connect the hoses and all there is a bonding and continuity checked hmm then you have got all cargoes cargoes have got their own risk you check out everything and then only you load cargo there are lots of rules and regulations how to load cargoes what quantities and so on collision if anything happens it is like shaking up the whole ship and then lot of things can go wrong because there will be physical damages short circuits and so on leakages lot of stuff will happen this is people coming on board and smoking because they just don't understand it simple and they can do a lot of mad stuff prevention how do you prevent fire basically uh, prevention means a good self discipline and identifying the areas where there is high risk ensuring that we don't leave any type of fuel there first thing is remove fuel possibility of every fuel removed then you start look oxygen you can't remove obviously heat is the second thing which you can re reduce eliminate whatever it areas of concern bottom of the lift shaft that is somewhere which we never see because you know day to day use some sort of lubrication can collect there because when we lubricate wires moving parts something can leak out little bit extra here and there and can collect in the bottom that is fuel stores same empty boxes are lying there which is invitation incinerators heat is there incinerators have got heat that is where you burn thing so it's possible somebody has kept something to burn and 
uh, that is fuel available. Laundry is drying room, heat is there, clothes are there, means you know, water garments may be there, the linen may be there. So heat is there along with this. And also something that happens in laundries, uh, you know, lint. Lint is something like those thread-like things you collect in laundry machines. They can be dangerous. They become like cotton and can catch fire. If there are any oil spills, okay. Waste paper baskets not emptied because you are not supposed to keep wet paper baskets full. They are only for temporary use. Ideally, all waste paper baskets must be empty. You use them only for temporary purpose and within two hours, you make sure it goes to the right place. It is not kept all over. Kelly exhaust duct, this is the most dangerous because over a period, there is, you can go in, in your kitchen and also check. You have got a small exhaust fan, you know. You put your finger there and check. You will find a lot of grease is accumulated there unless it's brand new. So same thing accumulates in these ducts and that can catch fire and spread fire both ways. Combustible material near heat sources means uh, it's a standard thing. More in engine room, this one you will find. Near heat sources, you don't keep anything. Like for example, uh, another one is in galley. If a guy is using any sort of cloth for cooking purpose he can't be keeping it next to the hot plate if you put it next to the hot plate there is a possibility it will catch fire clothes hanging over cookers heaters uh, should not be normally there anywhere uh, unless this heaters are something that you have putting there because normally you should not be having a hanging line only Good housekeeping always helps. Control of rubbish means make sure you don't create rubbish unnecessarily. If you have it, get rid of it in a proper manner. Tidy store rooms so that you do not have anything that can burn easily. Why? Because uh, what is required, that is the only thing in the showroom. The garbage, anything, empty cartoons, everything should be out. This is again, we come back to the same thing, still bins, storing, cleaning fluid, everything. As directed by a manufacturer, okay, you will notice this term, which is used very often. Uh, keep it cold, dry place, cool, dry place, like that, you know. So similarly, they also tell you, don't put it near source of heat and so on. So follow the direction. Like, don't expose to sunlight, you get this. Uh, if you read all sorts of things you handle, you'll find these directions are given. This can cause a big problem, not only at sea, but also at home. It has happened in my life. Uh, you know, there was a habit of somebody I know. Uh, if anything spills in kitchen, Mm, that lady used to be, and oh, never mind, the maid will come and clean it. I have mentioned it to her also. You should not leave it because at least keep a mop or something, mop it off. No. And then she slipped over that and broke her hand. Now, this sort of a thing, in this case, the spillages and all can also catch fire because dirty rags and all. This is, I suppose, a good habit which we had taught from childhood. Leaving the room, switch off the light, electrical equipment, close the door. That is how we learn. Okay, this first part you would not do it. It is already done. Competent person will be normally ETO. Then anyway, wherever we have got, like this ions, are not used anywhere, okay? Soldering iron is a professional equipment. It is only used when somebody is using it and they otherwise they switched off. Rarely used. Irons, electric irons for ironing clothes are available in laundry, but you have to ensure that 
it is switched off when you are not using it don't leave it on and go somewhere else overloading points means uh, i don't think it happens but people have tried long back i know your fit anyway on indian ship trying to tie up circuit breakers try has seen people trying it do not tamper <laughs> everything is designed on the ship to ensure that everything works okay so the electrical thing basically you don't play around just you uh, follow the normal thing the way you will follow at home galley you don't work there but this is more important this ducts filters clean and free of grease otherwise this is a standard discipline you switch off things when you don't use and somebody should be in attendance when the things are on otherwise do not smoking of course none of you smoke so there is no issue so but anyway in case you learn to smoke these ashtrays on ships they are not open type of ashtrays they are closed type of ashtrays they are different ashtrays not like what you see ashore they are closed type they are different types altogether i'll see if i can uh, get a picture or something then i'll tell you what type it is like the smoking also comes along with the agarbatti and all huh? pujas and all same story because basically you don't leave any flame anywhere okay and smoking and using the spray i have told you what happens dio dio spray machinery usual inspections everything is tested safe working practices this is the most important part and you this must be done every time there is a break empty containers must be done every time there is a break do not store wood paint spirit stains etc in machinery spaces that is what we have already mentioned it n number of times now we'll stop here and you ask any questions now we have got long way to go okay with this book we'll finish everything full syllabus and i am already working out on your um, what should i say on your uh, Uh, mcq tests okay now nobody is going by because i'll mark absent you are aware no i am unmuting all now you ask bye sir bye sir no, bye bye, bye. bye. welcome afterward bye sir tell me Bye bye. Do you do you want to hear? Bye sir. Bye. Do, do you understand? Bye. Bye. No support. Sir, on our call, can I see? Were Apurva is there or no? Is Apurva around? Yesterday also she had bunk. And present. Hmm. Ma che ci ha detto? Hmm. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. And then good afternoon. Good afternoon, Adhyan. <laughs> <laughs>